Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. We are back here in uh, Skyhold, and we need to go back to our war table next because we have a few operations to launch. And uh, I believe we need to go and attend Empress Selene's ball as well. Oh, but first of all, before we forget, we need to judge the uh, Magister, don't we? Mr. Eremond, the absolute sniveling prick. Adamant's influence continues, your worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. <laughs> to say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. A grim and serious matter. Yes. Many places felt the pain of adamant. You will answer for a great deal. I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear, not just Corypheus, but Tevinter, rightful ruler of every piece of ground ye trod in your pathetic life. Wow. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me. He dies by my sword. Jail him and lose the key. I'll give him to the wardens. <laughs> hmm. You know what? I think, yeah, give him to the wardens. Although willing, there is a group you have wronged more than any. Lord Livius Erimond de Varantium. The wardens can have you. Let them take your head, if they want it. Their petty justice or yours, it matters not. Truth lies in the next world. Probably should have jailed him, to be honest. Because then, because then he he was not dying, and he was not passing over to some next realm. Um, right. Oh, is there an, is there another one for us to judge? I thought I, I thought there'd only be one. I don't remember getting another. Who else is there? Another of the lingering pains of Adamant, your worship. Sir Ruth is a senior warden of the Order. Oh. She was one of the many who slit the throat of another to bind a demon. Ah. She does not contest this. In fact, she surrendered to us. She requests no mercy. She wants the public justice of the headman's axe. Not a request made lightly. You're very serious about this. Is more death the answer? There is no excuse for my actions. I murdered another of the order. That blood marks me more than the blight ever could. Accepting their actions while thralls of Corypheus, many treaties allow wardens any extreme if it opposes the blight. I can't do it. I can't use the greater good to justify my crimes, as if it would create a future I could be a part of. It is wrong that this broke me. I've done worse with full sanction. I can do nothing except be an example of the cost. Goes to the deep roads. I won't judge a warden. Jail her, throw away the key, or public humiliation. Then. Wow. Yeah, go to the deep roads. You feel your life is over. There's a place for such wardens. Sir Ruth, you'll go to the deep roads. Your death may be as quick as you choose. This sends no message. This is just... an end. I don't necessarily believe what all the Grey Wardens does was... Exactly bad, because because the, they did have good intentions of many of them. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna condemn them entirely. 
Right, let's see what these operations are. As I, th I, th I think we did get some operations as well, actually, uh, uh, that came in. Right, so let's, uh, let's have a look. There, it looks like there's quite a lot of them, actually. <laughs> Um, okay, the missing seekers. For a time, finding the... I agree. Are you well? A headache. Nothing more. Good. Right. For a time, find the missing seekers seems to have seemed, seemed, seemed to be impossible. Early indica indications point to these men and women heading one at a time into Ferelden, but here their trail weren't called. A chance rumour regarding Van Loren, a Ferelden nobleman who had not been heard from for months, led Inquisition agents to investigate K. Oswin, and they too went silent. These events are connected, and it seems this is where the missing seekers will be found. So their resources... Blimey, there's a, there is a lot of stuff going on, isn't there? Right, let's get, let's get an amulet for coal. Regardless of whether the call is a demon or a spirit, he remains vulnerable to venatory binding magic. The amulet of the unbound used by Raveni Seers is said to protect spirits from such magic. However, finding such an amulet in this part of the world will be difficult. I'm still reeling over the army of demons. Imagine what would have happened if the Inquisitor hadn't arrived. It's a scary thought. I know a wealthy Orlesian noble whose private collection includes jewellery from all over Third I doubt he would miss one piece. All my Ravenna contacts say these amulets are held dear, but to protect spirits from the breach, they are willing to help us. Eh, we'll get Liliana on the kiss. Use, use her connections. Investigate Lord Enzo of, Ant uh, Enzo of Antiva. The Venatori are smuggling Red Lyria into Antiva, but thus far they have evaded our grasp. We believe Lord Enzo of Rialto is assisting them. Enzo is clever, well-liked, and has relations among Antivan royalty. If we approach him without proof, he will bury his tracks and turn his allies against us. We must handle this carefully, Mason. So, Cullen has... Sorry, Laliana has Lord Enzo attends the theatre on the same night each week. His home is empty, save a few servants during that time. My agents could pay a visit. Or oh, I have a cousin in Rialto. If she threw a soiree and inv inv invited Lord Enzo, his house will be clear for Liliana's agents. We'll go for that. Liliana seems to be doing it regardless. Judgment, the death of good Sir Ruth. The disgraced Grey Warden Sir Ruth wishes to make good on your judgment, Inquisitor. She has asked for assistance in reaching one of the deeper recesses of the deep roads, so that her premature calling might serve a greater good. L laudable, but any expedition to the deep roads comes with considerable risk. Many of our soldiers lost family to the blight. I have no doubt many would volunteer to escort the warden. Uh, my concern is that they would not stop at escorting. The, the other options are an escort is simple. I could also arrange to note her exact path should you wish to recover her body for any perceived uh, honours. Or I suggest an invitation over an escort. Our dwarven contacts would welcome the chance to bolster their forces with the warden on, on her calling. See, I feel like those two are better, to be honest. So we just have to try and remember that that's there. Hard in Hightown, Trouble in Skyhold. Uh, the c copies of Hard in Hightown and Hard in Hightown 3, the repunctioning, sit side by side on the table along with the notes. Nightingale found several similarities to events in Varric's book, was all are slightly off. Dead magistrate uh, was not in his home. Man found murdered in locked room was a compt, not man, not magistrate. Exe e executors did not send warning note directly to Donnan. Obviously, objective plot is sort of a serie, not a penny dreadful author. Close look at the ripoff book shows numerous grammatical and spelling errors that seemed random at first, but ciphers believe might contain coded information. Killer and author are clearly linked. Either the murder investigation or the code might lead us might lead us to a target scrivener. Someone got in and out of Skyhold without being seen. The cipher in the book might lead us to them. Or Cullen says we should follow up on the murder investigation that the book is just a work of fiction. I think Laliana again is probably best suited for that, to be honest with you. Reparations for Redcliffe. A letter has arrived stamped with the seal of Redcliffe. As the Inquisition has assumed responsibility for the Mage Rebellion, the Arling of Redcliffe holds you accountable for the losses suffered by our people while providing hospitality to your Mage allies. A freehold in Rain's, uh, in Rainus Ferry was, bought, was burned to the ground when a Mage inside lost control of his, of his abilities. Two farms outside Redcliffe Village suffered crop loss and structural damage due to frost spells. Five people in Redcliffe Village were injured by lightning spells cast by panicked children. 
I trust this matter can be concluded with, without the involvement of the Crown, Altig and Gerin. I can arrange the pay reparations, it will require a loan, but we can manage it. We should send people to make repairs, that might satisfy the Isle. Yeah, we'll do that. Work. That that works. So we need to make sure that we remember uh, to Death of Good Sir Ruth and Hard and High Sound Trouble in Skyhold. They're both there to do for us. And then the may the may be stuff in all that yeah, the the, the, the basically is is definitely uh, going to be stuff in all there as well. However, our main focus now there's a lot. Dwarven Slayers are very sorry hands. Protect Valagamod from Darkspawn. Alliance is getting things moving. And the College of Magi. There's a lot of stuff to do. But for now we need to do Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts. An assassin is stalking the Empress. Selene's death will plunge all the way into chaos. Leaving it an easy target for Corypheus. At the Winter Palace of Halam Sheral, Selene's holding peace talks with her rebellious cousin, Grand Duke Aspard, under the guise of a Grand Ball. Every noble in the Empire will attend, making it the perfect place and time for Corypheus' assassin to strike. We can arrange an invitation to attend to keep him from, dest from destroying Ole if we hurry. Let's do that. We have to reach the Empress before Corypheus. The only question is, how? We know how. I have our way in. The real question is, where is our enemy hiding? At the urging of Grand Duchess Florian, the Empress is holding a ball. Absolutely everyone will be there. During the festivities, Céline will be meeting for peace talks with the usurper Duke Gaspard and Ambassador Briala. The assassin must be hiding within one of these factions. Right, tell me about Gaspard. What do we know about Duke Gaspard? The man who would have been Emperor. He's Céline's cousin and was first in line to inherit the throne when Emperor Florian died. Selene outmaneuvered him. She won over the Council of Heralds, who hold authority over title disputes. She became Empress, and he a general in the Imperial Army. He's well loved by the troops. He's also a Chevalier. Most of their numbers sided with him when he turned on the Empress. Aren't the Chevaliers part of the army? Why would they follow the Duke? Most Chevaliers are sworn to serve the Crown, but that does not give them faith in the person wearing it. The Empress has tried to improve relations with Ferelden and Navarra. The Chevaliers see her as anti-military. They believe Gaspard could lead the Empire back to the glory of Draken's expansion years. Wow, okay. Briala. Who is this Ambassador Briala? An ambassador in name only. She has organized the Elves of Halam Sheral into an underground army. The Empress invited her to the peace talks in a bid to gain the Elves' alliance in the war. That would be scandal enough, without the rumor that Briella is a jilted lover of Selene's. A personal grudge and a network of saboteurs at her command. Eh, promising lead. Wait, the Elven leader is a jilted lover of the Empress? It's not widely known. Just a rumor whispered among the palace servants a few years ago. If it's true and where to get out, the Empress and an elf. Hmm. The scandal could destroy Selene's court. Even if a lie, Briella could use it to blackmail the Empress. She has some connection to the throne. Tell me everything we know about the Empress. Empress Selene is a renowned diplomat and reformer. She works tirelessly to secure peace for the Empire. Unfortunately, many Orlesians view peace as complacency. She has yet to name an heir, leaving the future of the Empire in doubt if anything happens to her. Especially when the next in line is her cousin Gaspard, who's made few friends on the Council of Herons. Selene is surrounded at all times by countless guards, courtiers, servants, and vassals. What better place for an assassin to hide than the Empress's own household? How can Gaspard still be next in line while he wages war against his Empress? The title Grand Duke indicates that he was a prince before the Empress took the throne. Do we need to go to the peace talks? The Empress must have personal guards. We could just warn her she's in danger. We've made the attempt, but... It seems that our messages never reached her. Someone intercepted them. Ah. It's better that we don't leave this to chance. If Orle falls to Corypheus, no land is safe. Let's go, then. We shouldn't waste any time. Let's go to the Winter Palace. Right. Confirm. Let's go. This this will be curious. Uh, uh, attending a grand ball, we'll take our usual uh, bunch. Oh 
god. I did not want to see that picture of Varric at all. That's... that's... grim. Oh. I feel awful for him. I really do. Just lost one of his best friends. Oh boy. Can we, can we go back to the uh, to to Skyhold then while we're still here? Just it's just curious as the to whether situation we'll be able to keep up keep up on operations. The Empress fears our presence could sever it. The Grand Duke is only too happy to have us at the ball as his guests, so our invitation comes from him. Okay. Whether we act as his allies or upset the balance of power, he gains an opportunity, if not a clear advantage. I'm guessing that's Gaspar there, then. Oh, we do look grand, don't we? Inquisitor Trevelyan, we meet at last. I've heard so much about you. The rumors coming out of the Western Approach say you battled an army of demons. Imagine what the Inquisition could accomplish with the full support of the rightful Emperor of Orlais. That would be impressive. I can see many benefits to such an alliance. Keep the image firmly in mind. We may see it materialize by the end of the evening. I am not a man who forgets his friends, Inquisitor. You help me, I'll help you. Prepared to shock the assembly by appearing as the guest of a hateful usurper, my lord? They will be telling stories of this into the next age. I'm glad to help. Yeah. It's a pleasure to meet you, Duke Espard. I look forward to ending this civil war. As do I, my friend. The Empire needs stability and security now more than ever. If you have the safety of the Orlesian people at heart, Inquisitor, perhaps you will look into something for me. This elven woman, Briala, I suspect that she intends to disrupt the negotiations. My people have found these ambassadors all over the fortifications. Sabotage seems the least of their crimes. It's worth investigating. That sounds like something I should look into. Be as discreet as possible. I detest the game. But if we do not play it well, our enemies will make us look like villains. We're keeping the court waiting, Inquisitor. Shall we? I shall be with you in uh, in due course. What? Imagine? Don't be absurd. Oh, we, oh, we have court approval. One of the one of the Trollians. The Allegian court is pleased to see a noble, even a marcher, leading the Inquisition. You're you're off to a good start. Okay. Maker, I hope not. Hello there. Pardon me, my lord. You haven't seen a ring lying around, have you? It was a gift from the Countess Montbelliard, enchanted by the Fomari. I cannot go into the vault without it. Is it valuable? Is this ring particularly valuable? Its worth in coin is not as important as its social value. It was a gift from a member of the Council of Heralds. If she finds out I lost it, she will never forgive me. Not even if I live to be a thousand years old. Sounds serious, That's a yeah. Terrible predicament. If the Contest finds out, make her have mercy. Should you happen upon it, I beg you, let me know. Roger that. Search for her lost ring. Is this it here? Return the ring to the nobleman or keep it to sell. Oh, what a horrible person I would be to do that. What am I going to do if I cannot find my ring? I found it. Use gain court approval, which is usually the result of finesse, entertaining people, or keeping up appearances. The higher court's approval is the better. Is this the ring you were looking nice. for? Nice! You are a treasure! I cannot believe you found it! You have saved me a lifetime of mortification! How can I thank you enough? Ah, you don't have to thank me. Where could it be? I, I, in in your pockets, I, I I just I just gave it to you. Never mind, it's fine. So so can I leave here? I can't. No, nope, I I can't leave. Which is, you know, I'm I, I'm not surprised by. What is Gaspar 
to be honest. It, it's just going to be annoying because I've got, I've got a lot of operations that I have just picked up that I now can't attend to. I should have maybe been a bit more... Uh, I don't know what the word is, kind of... Uh, spread out with my main story progression. Uh, Winter Palace, the Vachil Fountain. Emperor Judicial I commissioned this massive fountain to commemorate House Valmont's historic victory against uh, uh, Xavier Draken. The four lines represent Emperor Alphonse Valmont and his three younger brothers, Duke Isidore Dal Dalmasor, Duke Avon of Savarin, and Duke Stefan of Valmontagne, who took the field against the, us the usurper. Hmm. Right, so nothing else in this immediate little courtyard, I do think, but we do have a few codex things to look at, don't we? Especially Gaspard's definitely one. Grand Duke Gaspard de Chamon. Lady Mantillon, I can no offer no apology for my nephew's behaviour the other night. Gaspard has never betrayed any interest in following my advice. In truth, everything he said to you at your dinner party, he has also said to me. His resentment at being deprived of the throne has festered for some time, and he was never one to accept defeat gracefully. I would take a spad's threat of war seriously. I do not believe my nephew knows how to resolve problems through the use of anything but steel. If his record on the battlefield is any indication, he's quite adept at, doing, at, at, at so doing. I shall be increasing my personal guard directly. Sincerely, Duke Gratien. And there's the Winter Palace as well on Hallam Sheral. After the glorious reclamation of the Dales, the Elven Capsule lay empty and, and, and in ruins for years, a haven for bandits and highwaymen and all manner of miscreants. The land lay unused until the exalted age when Alphonse Valmont, the very lion himself, declared that a palace should be built there in honour of the valiant actions of his brothers in investing the armies of false Emperor Xavier Draken. Originally called Chateau Lyon, it was designed as a grand retreat for the Emperor's brothers and their families. The city of Halam Shiral grew around the palace, the first records of its existence appear in the Storm Age, when Emperor Cyril granted the title of Marquis to Sir Reginald Montclair for administration of Hallam Sheral. An elven uprising destroyed Chateau Lyon in the Blessed Age. When Emperor Judicial I rebuilt it, he named the new retreat the Winter Palace. It was designed uh, more for the Emperor and his immediate family than, than for any cadet branches of House Valmont, and became the heart of the Imperial Court in the darkest months of winter. Alright, let's see. So this used to be Chateau Leon. Hmm, okay. K. Oswin, I worry about Lauren daily. Ever since the death of his wife and son in High Ever at the onset of the Blight, he retreats further and further into reclusion. Almost no one is permitted to come to uh, K. Oswin. The last time I managed to see him, it was only because I bullied my way into the castle and insisted his strange new guards take me to him. And I say strange new guards for a reason. Almost all the Oswin retainers have been sent away. These, these men didn't wear Ban Lauren's colours and they struck me more as prison wardens than, than as protectors. Lauren himself was pale and almost delirious. I begged him to see, a, to, to see a physic, and he promised he would, but I doubt he ever did. The guards ushered me out in a hurry, and the last time I returned, I was not even allowed past the gate. It's been months since anyone saw Lauren at all. I fear the worst has happened, yet I can prove nothing. All I can do is pray the rest of the banon take notice and act before a good man is lost. Eww. So he basically just sounds like he's going crazy in isolation. And not taking good care of himself in the slightest. Okay. Well, next episode we shall uh, press on into the palace and see what more things we can do while we're here at the ball. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I shall catch you all in the next episode of Dragon Age Inquisition. Thanks again, guys. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.